Genshin Impact has a lot to like as a whole. The characters and their accompanying backstories, the world, the different regions taken from real-world inspiration, the music that has reached far beyond the scope of just the people that play it, blah blah, you know the rest. Along with some of the really bad parts. But among the pros is the combat system. Genshin's combat system is uniquely different because of elemental reactions. Elemental reactions serve as your key to unlocking more damage, whether it be multiplicative through vaporize and melt, or filling your screen with a seizure of numbers with most of everything else. The enemies in Genshin don't have inherent weaknesses. They do have resistances and immunities, sure, but when it comes to concrete weaknesses, not a single enemy has any at all. So with that in mind, Genshin's combat system boils down to spamming elemental reactions, right? Well, mostly yes. But there are a few characters that stray from that formula entirely. Those being Shao, Yula, and lastly, our focus for this video, Arataki Ito. Ito is a Geo Hypercarrier released back in version 2.3 of Genshin, aka December 2021, so a good two and a quarter years ago. Ito, along with the rest of the non-reaction based hypercarries, are the extreme opposites to the selling point of Genshin's combat system. Geo and physical damage in particular don't have any offensive bonus multiplicative or additive damage, but even more particular, the Geo element itself prefers working with those of the same element with the exception of Navia. The only reaction Geo has is Crystallize, which up to this point only Navia makes primary use of. Granted, Navia's damage is absolutely insane given the levels of investment you have to put into her to get them. But that's not who we're looking at. Ito, in all rights, does have damage potential. His moveset and scaling are enough to keep him relevant. Ito does have attack scaling properties when it comes to how his damage is being calculated, but that's not entirely true. Sure, it is attack that's being used, but only because his Burst will convert most, if not all, of his defense stat into attack, as well as giving him a Geo Infusion on his normal charged and plunging attack damage. Because of this, he can get a crazy looking attack stat that makes those talent scalings crazier. This made defense more optimal to build for on Ito. Not only does the stat make him tankier, but that defense would then be converted to offense. It's because of this that he doesn't need to compete for some of the top characters in the game when you're deciding who to put on what team. Most of the top buffers aren't all that great when trying to support him. You can can make a case for Bennett, but Ito has a primary support that overshadows even him. Goro. Goro is single-handedly the best teammate for Ito. He buffs defense and geo damage and still is the only character to do so. Not only that, but when you unlock his higher level constellations, he can also act as a supplementary healer at C4 as well as boosting geo crit damage at C6. That came with a small problem though. The ability that buffed defense and geo damage would need a total of 3 geo characters on the team to fully max out the effect. So, you'd need another Geo character in the party outside of Ito and Goro. Common picks were generally Albedo and or Zhongli, for the passive off-field damage or the almighty Jade Shield respectively. That being the case though, that pretty much meant you had one free character slot, or none at all if you had all four, since that was his best team. That aside though, Ito's gameplay loop is also insanely simple, part of why I'm making this video instead of a guide for him. He mainly functions inside of his burst, as outside of it, he doesn't do much in the way of damage. So you get all your support abilities up, swap to him, and cast his burst. Ito is a charged attack DPS, but he's different in that he doesn't need stamina to use them. He has his own stacking mechanic called Superlative Super Strength, I'll be calling them SS stacks from here on. Ito can have a maximum of 5 stacks at one time, and they enable him to use his unique unique charge attack, Arataki Kesagiri. This makes up the bulk of actually playing him. How you get those stacks is through multiple means. Casting his burst, throwing Ushi by using his skill, having enemies hit Ushi since it also acts as a taunt, or by using his normal attacks. Speaking of his skill, let's go over it a bit. Masatsu Zetsugi Aka Ushi Burst is kinda funny. On cast, Ito throws Ushi onto the field, this mini cow that sits there wagging his tail for 6 seconds and taunts nearby enemies. Whenever Ushi is hit, Ito gains an SS stack, up to once every 2 seconds. When Ushi leaves the field after those 6 seconds, you get another stack. Now that all sounds great, but what's even funnier is that this ability will, on average, do more damage than Zhongli's Meteor. I've always found that funny. <laughs> Anyways, on the regular, Ito will generate SS stacks for every second or fourth hit of his normal attack combo, but in his burst state, that's now every hit in the combo. Since that is the case, while you can optimize for the best combo to use, Ito is still fine even if you just mix and match combo strings, not having to adhere to a strict one. Even if he himself is fine though, 
the restriction on his team setup isn't. Due to the inherent rule of needing Goro, if you don't have even a C0 Goro on the party, his damage falls behind that of a Diluc that's not Shenyun boosted. Trust me, I hate saying that as much as I realize it's true. Not only Goro though, as even having him wouldn't be enough to bridge the gap between Ito and some of the top teams. You would still need to fully max out the Geo party member quota that his skill has, with the two best choices for it being Albedo and Zhongli. While it isn't the hardest thing to slot in Zhongli, as I imagine most of the player base has him, Albedo is a character that is hardly used out outside of this team. While he can go on every team and work fine, there's usually a better option over him in most cases. If all you wanted to do was fully spec out your Ito team, then yeah, Albedo is a great option. Although maybe that's less true now with the introduction of Chiori, who essentially serves most of the same role as Albedo, with a higher damage ceiling and without the fear of breaking a Geo construct. Oops. After all that, you realize that was basically me saying that, at most, Ito has four good options for teammates, right? Yeah, that's the real problem he has. If we were to switch the conversation over to how flexible he and his teams are, he'd lose immediately. The basic requirement of needing Goro essentially limits your team down to one free slot, with the other one needing to be filled in by a Geo character. Since Ito needs most, if not all, of the team to be behind him and supporting him, he's very limited in that extra teammate. Sure, you could throw in an off-field support, but before Goro C4, you run the risk of not having any form of sustain if you're also not using Zhongli. On top of that, trying to make Ito good wouldn't be enough. Goro himself is extremely energy hungry as he's not good at generating his own particles, all the way through to C6. And since what Goro does is extremely niche for the current roster of characters, there's not much of a reason to build him outside of an Ito team. In the way of account progression, that's putting a hard stop on your account for a few weeks to build up both of them, making it extremely inefficient if you don't already have at least two good teams. Albedo too! As if needing to build up a niche 4-star wasn't bad enough, now, for any sort of meaningful synergy whatsoever, you'll also want Albedo, who seldom comes around for reruns and is mid on other teams at best. Yes, Chiori exists now, but that doesn't resolve how inefficient it is to build this team, due to her just replacing Albedo's spot if you have her, and still, not much more outside of that. The one silver lining to this is that they all basically want the same artifact set, maybe say for Goro and Chiori, the four-piece set of Husk of Opulent Dreams. But the caveat to that is that it's extremely inefficient to farm for much of anything outside this team, whereas you could be farming for Emblem of Severed Fate or a modern Shosei Hunter, given that you have Farina, to improve a good half of the entire cast of playable characters. You might be wondering that. After two years, how good is he actually? Ito is still amazing at what he does. Sure, after the advent of version 3, alongside its inclusion of Dendro, and even version 4 with Farina and the Mara Shose Hunter artifact set that essentially negates the worry for crit rate, he might seem like he got weaker, but he's still a character that I can comfortably clear most content in the game with. And most of the footage used in this video was before I got C6 Goro. For me personally, he presents some of the most mindless fun in running down enemies without having to think too hard about elemental reactions or optimizations. But remember, Genshin's not that hard of a game, and you're better off having fun with it anyways. And that's after the peak. Thanks for watching. See ya.